What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here to talk about the new arena. Can you believe we're actually got a new arena? We have content in One Piece Treasure Cruise. What is this? I really hope that we get more arenas in the future because they are a lot of fun and it does give us something to do, you know, in that little off period between batch releases and treasure maps. So I'm really excited that we are getting a new arena today and this one is interesting because when I, uh, I actually wasn't here on the release of the event, I was out at the time but coming back and actually reading the gimmicks of the fight it looked pretty challenging however there are a couple of key characters that you can use either on your own team or as a friend captain that make this fight just incredibly easy like honestly this is another arena that you can get through without too much hassle so long as you have very certain friend captains which i don't think they're going to be very difficult to find for this arena now this arena unit sasaki i think he's actually pretty good i i could definitely see this character being used in some content so here we have the uh, the new sasaki who is an int powerhouse driven, which is a, a, a revolutionary, you know, type and class combination. His captain ability, nothing really too crazy. It reduces his own cooldown by four turns at the start of the quest, and then powerhouse and driven get a 3.75 attack boost, and then int characters get a 1.5 health boost. So not a great captain, but I guess if you wanted to run a free-to-play team for some reason, then I guess maybe. Uh, his special ability, though, is pretty good. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it maxes out. I think it's like, what, eight turns, something like that. But the effect reduces cooldown for the whole crew by one it reduces despair and attack down only by two turns but then it does 80 times his attack in typeless damage to a single target so damage dealing special is always good and he also gives you a color affinity boost to driven and powerhouse for one turn now the color affinity boost that he provides will change depending on how many times you've launched the special so on the initial activation you get a two times color affinity boost on the second activation you'll get also a two times color affinity boost but you also will get an additional one turn removal of despair and attack down so that means on initial launch you get two turn despair attack down removal on the second launch you'll get an additional one turn so it becomes three turn removal so uh, when using the double special which this character does have double special then you remove five turns of despair and attack down which is very good but then if you go ahead and save again for his special then it's a 2.25 color affinity and an additional four turns of despair and attack down removal so that's pretty interesting where you can launch it and remove six turns of despair and attack down on that third turn which is very very strong so this character is pretty interesting and i definitely think he's going to see some play in some fashion he's probably going to be very good for the upcoming treasure map um, against who's who so we'll have to wait and see how that kind of progresses um he interestingly enough doesn't have an effect that re that resists special reverse that really sucks if he did whew, this character would definitely be seeing play um the fact that he doesn't have that's honestly really weird okay so i'm not a fan of that um his support effect is also kind of interesting attaching to page one ulti black maria and who's who and if you use it on a on a special that reduces cooldowns then it gives a color affinity boost of 1.5 to driven and powerhouse for one turn and then reduces bind by one turn so it has to be one of these units that does a cooldown reduction special which is not many of them i know that the one that comes to mind straight away is legend who's who but he's also a color affinity booster so you can't really stack this guy with that who's who unless if you wanted to use this support to remove one turn of bind in that case then yes you could definitely do it in that way um his rumble abilities aren't really too powerful unfortunately the rumble ability gives powerhouse attack six hp six and then cerebral speed down level five that is interesting and then the 26 ct special targets cerebral enemies in a large horizontal range for special bind guaranteed for six seconds and if you launch the special in the first 50 seconds three enemies for ct speed down level three and if it's after 50 seconds have passed then three enemies are hit with 100 ct uh characters that have max special basically for attack down level eight so it's an interesting kind of kit but he's probably never really going to see play in pirate rumble so that's the breakdown of sasaki a very interesting character make sure to get this character farmed up before the treasure map because he's likely going to be good for one of the mini bosses in that fight so jumping into the breakdown, the first team that we have is going to be with Korra and Law, but you do see a very particular friend captain. You're going to be seeing that theming a lot, probably with a lot of people's teams out there, because Uta as a friend enables so much because she carries so hard with her captain ability, being able to resist special reverse, being able to resist paralysis, and her special ability providing an attack and an orb boost for multiple different stages. And considering your beneficial effects are never really removed in this content, Uta is just perfect, right? Who's, who's very simple? 
temple. He does reverse the cooldowns of your bottom row and uh, applies a great lock barrier thing. So the characters that are on your bottom row will never get their specials naturally. You have to use cooldown reduction in order to get them. Black Maria here does do a lot of things. There's a five turn rainbow shield, five turn attack down given to your crew, and your top row is inflicted with six turns of special reverse. So that's obviously really bad. But of course, when you have a character such as Uta, you can just straight up resist it. You also get given block slots, so you need to find a way to remove those block slots. And on the final stage, speaking of Sasaki, you're not allowed to use a color affinity boost on that stage. If you do, then he removes beneficial effects and accumulated values and gives you recovery bind. So you have to try and carry the color affinity into the stage, or you have a support that is able to trigger that, or you just straight up just don't use color affinity on that stage. Another thing about Sasaki is that Sasaki on stage five will revive, which is again why Uta is so good, because you can use her on stage four and you can get boost on the stage four fight. You can get it on stage five and also on the revive. Another thing that is very, very important is that if you enter the final stage with less than 10% HP, then he gives you 20 turns of despair and 5 turns of slot bind. Obviously, not very good, but obviously you can go ahead and uh, try a, a healing effect is going to be probably your best way forward to deal with that, which once again is why Utu is so good, because Utu's super class does give you some health back, it gives you healing, and also buffs her own attack and orb boost. So, again, as I said, Utus, like, hardcore carries this content, and you'll be seeing in the fact that we have, like, this random Miyagi character on the team because he's an Int Cerebral unit. He's literally just a three-star silver character, or four-star. Silver's are four-stars. Just a random, like, silver character. He's nothing too great. He's literally just there because you can replace it with literally anything. So, uh, it actually works out pretty good. Moving on now to the second team is going to be with the Film Red Chopper. And dude, I'm actually a big fan of Film Red Chopper. I think he's a pretty underrated legend. The really cool thing about Film Red Chopper is that his special ability provides color affinity on activation. And if you hit those three perfects, you'll also get it on the final stage, which is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be carrying it into stage five so that when we reach that stage, we have a lot of color affinity. Now, another character that's going to be very good is going to be uh, Jewelry Bonnie because you have to deal with Special Bind on the last stage and Bonnie's able to remove it. She also provides an attack boost for your int characters and also gives you a really good chain lock and she also does really good orb shuffling. Now, another thing that you do have to pay attention to is the fact that on the last stage, Sasaki will treat all your colored slots as badly matching. So there, you need to find some type of way to get around that and there are actually a couple of ways that you can do that. So as you saw in the previous team with Core and Law, obviously with their mechanics, we can just have the empty slots and we don't have to worry about it, especially when Sasaki revives he does give you block slots, which is why Core and Law actually work very well here. But on this stage, um, with, with this team, we're able to use the special of Bonnie to give us those slots because Bonnie will change badly matching slots into matching. Well, not really into matching per se. She goes, she changes them into recovery, which we can treat as matching with uh, her crewmate ability, of course. And that alone helps us out. And then, of course, when we kill Sasaki and he revives, he gives us a full board of block slots, which Yamato special is able to change those into Wano slots, allowing you to have those matching slots again. And of course, Uta's attack and orb boost will still be activated and we can get through the Sasaki stage very simply with this team. Now we're moving on to my boy Mr. Slam Jam V1 Katakuri. Now do note that my Katakuri is Limit Break Expanded and he does have level Limit Break 5. So it is as maxed as you can possibly get. Um, despite all that, you could probably get through it even without all of those buffs, to be honest. Um, because... <laughs> 
like, as I said, Uta just carries so hard here. So, um, one thing that you do have to pay attention to with this team is that we do have the support of Nami on our crew, so that when we reach the last stage, we get given a color affinity boost, in turn meaning that when we use the special of Marco, it will not trigger the interrupt of Sasaki. Very, very important to do that. Marco also gives us the ability to remove special bind, which is why he is chosen for the team, and he is also double boosted by Katakuri, so it just actually works out very, very well. Now, you do see that we do have uh, 6 plus Usopp on the team now. <laughs> That's a character I haven't used in a very, very long time. But uh, it makes sense because we are using Katakuri special on stage 4, which means that if we hit a certain amount of perfects, I think it's 3, then we get a delayed conditional boost in the following turn. So when we reach the final stage versus Sasaki, we need to try and get a delay on the enemy. And the enemy is immune to all debuffs except for paralysis and uh, the ignited effect, the burn effect. So by using the special of Usopp, we can get the guaranteed delay, which means the, the, the conditional boost from Katakuri is active. And then because of the captain ability of Katakuri, lots of these slots are treated as matching. We have so much damage here. Even if we only had like one matching slot on a double boosted character, I think we were going to be fine either way. And then, of course, on the revive, we need to deal with block slots. We have the Shirohoshi and Mancherry to do that. And then Uta, once again, has the attack and all boost that's still going to be active to give us all of that amazing damage to get through the fight. And now we have the final team of the video, but I cannot take credit for this team. This is a massive shout out to Dylan OPTC. A link to his Twitter will be down below in the video description here. Um, this is probably going to be my farming team just because it is incredibly fast as you can just use the Kizuna Kid to wave clear the first two stages and you don't even need to stall at all. Now, I know not everyone is going to be able to build this team because it does require very specific supports as well as, you know, the specific characters, you know, obviously looking at ulti right there. And uh, not a lot of people will probably have legend ulti. And this is the type of character that really doesn't see a lot of play because she isn't really required in a lot of content. But she helps out pretty much here because she gives us base attack boost and she gets around the attack down, which does get inflicted to us on battle four. And with Halloween Ace as the captain, we can resist special reverse, we can resist special bind, so we don't have to worry about those debuffs at all. And then Big Mom as our friend captain to provide her all of her amazing buffs, of course. So uh, it actually works out pretty effectively, as I said, and you don't even have to stall at all, so long as you have all the characters with their natural cooldowns ready to go. Now, my Ace is Limit Break Expanded and level Limit Break 5. I'm not too sure on the investments that you do need for that Ace, but my one is completely maxed out and it did work great, but even without the level limit break or without the limit break expansion, uh, I wonder if this would still be able to work as effectively. But either way, that is going to wrap it up from me. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video. Mama! Mama!
はもういらないんだよ。